be a failure. As long as it's not gonna kill you, it's gonna make you what? Stronger. different perspectives from uh, art, from media, from uh, the maker culture and I'm here to learn from you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> and honored to be here. First of all, I want to say thank you to Geraldine and to the survey and all the team of uh, Berlin Republica. Please give a big hand if you know their people. This is not a really unusual situation that we're just coming here to a, uh, to a country uh, on another continent and just building up a Republic with the same feeling as in Berlin. Uh, this is really awesome. Also, thank you so much to the team in Accra here. So, thank you. Big, big hand for them too. Uh, we work together. And, uh, of course, a key new experience for us to work with two teams on one, on one show, and uh, I think it worked out. And uh, you give us all um, uh, the power um, for the next two days to uh, make this happen as a, I think one of the greatest events Accra may have seen. Thanks to the uh, um, BNZ and the, the GIZ, our partners, thank you to all the sponsors. If you know me in Berlin, I have always a long list from all our partners and sponsors. For today, I will leave it with, um, with a big thank you and from you, please, a big applause to all the partners supporting this event. Without uh, you, we couldn't do it, so thank you very much. And um, it's, it's a pleasure to work with you. And um, of course, I probably will use the chance uh, to discuss with you in the next days how we can make that happen again. <laughs> touch on the question he asked about the fact that we have a lot of foreign donors in the space so there's not enough incentive for local government to actually study the space see what startups are out there and actually invest in them so you see some of these guys saying they've been funded by mess they've been funded by all sorts of other organizations meanwhile there should be a portion of our tech our taxpayers money set aside to help these guys who are actually creating the solutions because you see government is on one side complaining about problems we have uh earlier i talked about zipline which is an a Silicon Valley company that created a drone and they are charging Ghana $12 million for it. Couldn't we have found someone locally to do that? The only track record this company has is Rwanda. They've not done it anywhere else. They're a small company, yet the Ghanaian government is willing to pay $12 million for it. So how do we start connecting government to local startups versus startups going after international donors and then the government can just sit back and relax? Yeah. Okay. I'm sure, Henry, oh, you can you can uh, take that. Oh, okay. You're from Rwanda. Uh, you well, there, you know there's supply? actually more more than uh, there's other companies that are doing drone technology. I'll tell you another story. Um, there was a drone company before Zipline came to Rwanda. Uh, they were not doing the same thing. Obviously, Zipline uh, came with a different uh, business case, but that company is dead in the water now. You can't compete with someone in the same space that is able to raise millions and millions of dollars. You just can't compete. So. Uh, just to add quickly, another space where there's a lack of Africans in that space because we're not able to tap into the money is the home solar system or the solar business. Less than 3% of African entrepreneurs are into this business. And the reason why is because they can't get access to the funding. But to answer quickly uh, uh, the question, I don't think uh, those organizations are... are uh, um, what you call that, uh, blindsiding uh, the government. The need is so big, we need more money, you know. So I don't think, there's not enough money out there to, to solve our problems. So I don't think uh, it's actually uh, an issue. I think government needs to wake up and, and be more aggressive. That's what the problem is. And I'm talking about African governments. All right, thank you. I think you do want to... Ouais, juste en une phrase, en fait. Ce qu'on a dit dans le pitch de la conférence, comment mettre fin à l'aide, etc., 
both and then to a foreign aid on African economies, I think it is the same process. So if uh, African governments or entrepreneurs themselves think that these are solutions from the from donors in order to, to develop our countries, I think it is a big mistake. And uh, once again, we are making the same mistakes uh, 30, 40 years ago. No economic power or no foreign leverage or pillar will have the highest responsibility in our countries. This is not possible. Anybody who said it, it is a dream, it is a tale, it is never true. Thank you. Question around the Startup Act. Um, someone was asking, sure, which one was you? Uh, it was it you that raised that? So someone was trying to understand around the Startup Act, how does that work? Yeah. Act. Okay. This is a relevant question. Uh, uh, let me get back to what I said on the Startup Act. Uh, it, is, it, it is a bill that is going to be put in place uh, very soon in order to accompany uh, the entrepreneurs or the startups in Senegal, my country. And this is the consequence of the creation of uh, and the agency just to say that government is working they put in place a 30 billion fund i don't know uh, how much it is in u.s dollars so 30 billion francs cfa that is going uh, to be used by startup in a rapidity in the implementation and in how to make this fund available but i think we need to go further because when we create an agency or a department or any institution we need to understand the situation of our countries today a government or a power can come again and say this institution is going to be cancelled because sometimes we have some instability when things move on so things need to be sustainable and as such it should be uh, it, it should be part of the law so that's why the startup act is welcome and um, uh, the design of this uh, startup act is not something that should be imposed from above uh, I see uh, one of the person who, re who uh, drew, who uh, designed, she's there in blue, she drafted this act. She's part of the, uh, the innovators and they have been working. They came up with some perimeters and they saw how things are going to happen because actually government uh, are, are not very specific, they're even uh, late. And uh, this is a work that is coming from uh, stakeholders and this uh, helped me go further. Sometimes and this is, uh, let me just say it, uh, it, it's not necessarily true, in a lot of public policies that I see in Africa, these are public policies that have been designed with agreements of the, of the people at the grassroots. This is something that is not true because when we talk about people, we are not going to meet all the Ghanaians in the stadium and ask them what they think. I mean, Ghanaian, the youth, the women, etc., have some representatives uh, that are called Association of Youth, Women, Civil Society, that are consulted for point of views in terms of implementation of public policy. So uh, if I'm not around to defend any government, I, I criticize my government a lot. When uh, people read my book, you understand it, but it's something that is not necessarily true. Sometimes uh, the voices of the people are required. Now, afterwards, is it in order to take into account the, uh, what they say into public policy, or are they going to represent what is going to be said? Absolutely not. Uh, or uh, from the design to the discussion to the changes after the implementation, the, the passing of the bill does it not take 10 to 15 years and then after that we miss the reason why it was done and we miss the content because things move very very fast and things in our world and our countries uh, uh, move daily to a close now and so perhaps i'll just bring this as a summary i think the greatest takeaways from this discussion very spirited i've not seen a more passionate pay uh, is the fact that you know, there is room for entrepreneurship, but certainly there are limitations to it. We cannot be able in Africa to entrepreneur our way out of everything. We cannot be able to entrepreneur our way out of bad governance. But there's also room for, for, for government as part of the ecosystem. And theirs perhaps should be just on the policy end, you know, making it feasible, making it possible for the startups, for the entrepreneurs to do their thing. And so I think for me, I do sense some kind of consensus. You're both very spirited. Government has its role. Entrepreneurs have their role and each of them must know their space. Obviously, there are also other players who are coming in from development spaces, who are coming in from private uh, corporations, etc. All of us must come through to one ecosystem. And I think the greatest thing is just to respect the boundaries and the limitations of what each one is able to do. So I'm going to allow the gentleman to give us a parting shot. We did start on a, a tip that says, will the startup economy continue to bloom? Will startups and entrepreneurs help African countries 
be free from a dependency. So I want you to comment quickly as the last thing around the dream that we should be selling to the usual African person, right? What is the dream that we should be selling? Are we pushing for a vibrant, creative, strong citizenry? Or are we looking that all of us become businessmen or as many of us become businessmen and we take charge of our own issues? So let me give you opportunity to free, really freestyle. Uh, just let us know what your final words are. Oh, you can go ahead. Okay, if you announce the last bit, okay, that's fine. You start. <laughs> Alors, moi, j'aurais juste un dernier mot en parlant. Uh, let me talk about that dream. Last year, with some friends, we wrote a book. I, I know you will not be in agreement uh, with me. We wrote uh, a book uh, which is called Politicize, your, Politicize your, Yourself. Um, African youth need to go into politics and they have to take the power in order to implement what they want. This is what is relevant and nothing else. Thank you. Um, I, I'm going to deviate a little bit and end with this. You know, I, I like the fact that you talk about role. Yes, government has a role. Entrepreneurship has a role. And, you know, I look at uh, entrepreneurship and government like uh, soccer. You have a referee. That's the role of the government, you know, to do referee, to make sure that the laws are followed. But, you know, when you have a referee trying to play soccer at the same time, that's what the problem is, you know, and that's what the that's what the issue is. Ma, ma, and I'm going to end with this, you know, how can you have government creating fun? you know, dispersing those funds when they don't even understand what entrepreneurship is. And that's my problem. You know, you have somebody behind a desk making decision, not understanding what entrepreneurship is. That's my biggest problem. Right. And so that leaves me. I'm going to leave that hanging. Food for thought for all of us. I want to just thank you. Please do help me as a as attendees, just to thank Hamidu N, a very spirited conversation there, and to also thank Henry uh, Nyakarundi. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming through. Please go and show your governments this clip, okay? And go and show every other partner in your ecosystem this particular video, and let's see how far it takes us. Thank you very much.